people in the house. Yeah. Do you believe that you are free? That yeah. you are no longer bound? Hallelujah. Yeah. That Amen. every curse is broken. Every curse was dissolved and absorbed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus said that it is finished. Every curse is finished.
Just to say that you're holy, holy Lamb of God. As we join our hands on the left and the, and the right, we want to pray for our nation. We want to pray for our children. Let's join your, your neighbor's hand. Let's pray. Let's stand in the gap for the nation. Let's stand in the gap for our children. Father, we want to bless you this afternoon. We want to commend our children unto your able hands. We want to commend the teenagers, the youth, unto your able hands. We decree and declare that, Lord, your hand is watching over our children, over our young ones in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to decree and declare that the hand of the enemy shall not be strong against them in the name of Jesus. We want to speak the blood upon our children, even in this season that they have closed schools. We want to decree and declare that no evil shall befall any of them in the name of Jesus. We hide them under your blood in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to decree and to declare for the children that you have given unto us. They are for signs and wonders in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you, Jehovah God, even upon the nation of the of the of of, of, of the name of Kenya, oh God. We want to decree and declare that your hand is upon this nation, Jehovah God. We want to stand in the gap and decree and declare that the prophetic destiny of this nation will stand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We want to decree and to declare that, Lord, the arms of government is blessed, the legislature, oh God, the executive, the judiciary, oh God. We want to decree and to declare your wisdom, your counsel upon them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, even upon the nation of Kenya, we bleed the blood. We speak the blood of the Lamb. We come against every spirit that is thirsty for blood. We want to decree and declare that Lord preservation of lives is the portion of this nation in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of accidents. Father, we plead for mercy upon the nation of Kenya and we want to decree and declare upon the border that borders this nation. On the east, on the west, on the east, and on the north and the south, we want to decree and declare the blood of the Lamb. We speak the blood of the Lamb in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We want to remember Apostle David, oh God, and his family, Dr. Eunice, their children, Delvin, Daniel, Darlene. We decree and declare that, Lord, you uphold them with your righteous right hand. We want to decree and declare that, Lord, you meet them at every point of their need in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, even for the Grace Arena Ministries, oh God, across my Father God, the globe. We decree and declare that Lord, each and every one is blessed in every country where Grace Arena Ministries are. We decree and declare that Lord, you do them good. Everyone even who is watching, we want to decree and declare a blessing upon each one of them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We welcome the Grace News. the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to today's Sunday service, broadcasting live from Grace Arena Ministries in Nairobi, Kenya. A heartfelt welcome is extended to our online attendees. We pray that God's abundant blessings shower upon you. April is our month of honor and our theme verse is from the book of first thessalonians 5 verses 12 to 13 and now friends we ask you to honor those leaders who work so hard for you who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in your obedience overwhelm them with appreciation and love let's do a recap of our roadmap which explains what our values as a ministry are at grace arena ministries we connect with god 
we grow, we serve, and finally we expand in Jesus' name. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, teaching him to seek God's wisdom and will for his abilities and talents. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. The Grace Arena Ministries Children's Service is held each Sunday at the Children's Sanctuary from 9 to 11.30 a.m. and is open to children aged 4 to 15 years. Additionally, we offer an online Sunday school service at 9.30 a.m. East African Time specifically for children within this age range. Our Sunday school team is well prepped and dedicated to sharing Bible teachings that aid in the spiritual development of your children. Lessons include crafts, songs, and storytelling to aid in retention. For parents who have children joining virtually via Zoom, please use the details in the provided flyer to log them in. Still in line with Sunday school, please note, on Saturday the 13th of April, we will hold our vocational Bible school right here in church from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. for children ages 4 to 15 years. The theme verse for this is my true identity and the entry is absolutely free. The theme verse, 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God so that you may declare the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. All parents, please purpose to drop your young ones for this awesome time of fun and learning. Have you received a prophetic word or been blessed by Apostle David's ministry through his preaching and teaching? You know what it means by goodness? Goodness means the kindness of God. He gives you and showers you blessings even when you don't deserve it. That is the goodness of God. Now, goodness follows you because you do the right thing. Because you are walking in the ways of God. You are doing everything that you need to do. So anytime you go, everywhere you go, the goodness of God follows you because you carry an anointing and you are walking in the ways of God. But God knows that you, you are not perfect. God knows that you, you have got frailties and weaknesses. So maybe you will miss it. But so then he added something called mercy. Mercy means exemption from judgment. You were supposed to have been judged for the wrong things you did. But there is something that is following you every day called what? Mercy. Instead of something bad happening to you, mercy is speaking for you. And the reason why it is following you every day is because every single day of your life you need mercy. His books are received a prophetic word in Revelation 12, 11. The Bible encourages us to tell others about God's goodness. Testimonies are a way for God to reveal himself to us. We are eager to hear your personal accounts of how God intervened in your life, whether it be through healing, miraculous escapes from danger, sudden financial doors opening, restored relationships, or any other answered prayer. Testimonies serve as evidence to both believers and non-believers that God is actively involved in the world and he transforms people's lives. Please reach out to Apostle David on plus 254-799-403-242 to share your written audio or video testimonies. To book a one-on-one -on -one session with Apostle Dr. David during the week, kindly get in touch through the number plus 254-759-212-574. First Timothy 4.12. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Greater Grace Youth Church invites you to our services as listed. Each Saturday, we have a physical service from 11 to 1.30 p.m. We also meet on Google Meet each day at 3 to 4 a.m. for a session dubbed Fragrance of Tanks. Every Wednesday, there is a reactivation service from 8 to 8.45 p.m. For more information, kindly reach Pastor Lanya on plus 254-768-704-852. Please note, the virtual cell meetings are back and are held every Monday from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. East African time. Please 
purpose to attend. To show solidarity with the community, the Grace Arena Ministries care team has initiated a monthly full drive starting April 21st, 2024 to be held every third Sunday. We kindly request dry non-perishable food items. To contribute, please send your donations via pay bill number 7194870 account food drive. For further details, kindly reach plus 254722215692R plus 254722231076. May blessings accompany your generous giving. Have you recently given your life to Christ? Our Grace Arena Ministries discipleship classes are on every Sunday from 12.15 to 1.15 p.m. at the Youth Church. For more information, kindly reach the number plus 254-759-212-577. Join us for Wordfest from Sunday, 28th April to Monday, 5th May, 2024. The guest ministers will be Dr. George Wilfred Arthur from Ghana and Apostle Charles Benham from the United Kingdom. This week will be dangerously oily. Please plan to attend and tell a friend we have a Wordfest from Sunday, 28th April to Monday, 5th May, 2024. For those of us wishing to join School of Prophets, and learn more about the prophetic, this is for you. The School of Prophets Level 1 starts on Monday, 8th of July, 2024. This is a class you cannot afford to miss. The topics include sharpening your prophetic gift, 10 secrets of the prophetic, how to hear and see in the spirit, hindrances to hearing and seeing in the spirit. To register, please contact plus 254759-212-577. Our first baby dedication service in 2024 is scheduled to take place on 21st of April 2024. Please register by end of day tomorrow. For more information, kindly reach the number 0794 one zero seven three five one for more information. We kindly remind all congregants that consuming snacks and soft drinks in the sanctuary is strictly prohibited. If taking water, kindly do so at the water stations and dispose the tumbler. You are not allowed to bring the tumbler into the sanctuary. Our ashes and protocol team are mandated to usher you out to enjoy your snacks and beverages downstairs to maintain the sanctity and cleanliness of our worship space. Please utilize the open area on the ground floor for these activities. Thank you for your cooperation and respect for our sacred space. This serves as a gentle reminder to all who generously pledge towards the construction of our new church building. Your timely redemption of these pledges is vital for the realization of our collective vision and the timely completion of our new edifice. Please ensure to fulfill your pledges by sending your monies to the given details conveniently displayed on the screen. Your commitment plays a crucial role in enabling us to move forward with this significant project. Thank you for your continued support and dedication to seeing this project come to fruition. The word of God in Job 38, 12 reads, Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? Please join our powerful sessions each morning dubbed Prophetic Prayer Hour on Facebook as we make prophetic decrees and command fruitfulness into our days at 7 a.m. East African Time, 6 a.m. Southern Africa Standard Time, Central African Time, 4 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 11 p.m. Central Daylight Time, and Eastern Daylight Time, 12 a.m. In conclusion, this week's wisdom nugget from the International Forensic Prophets Desk reads, You were not born to repeat records. You were born to set records. Thank you for being part of the Grace Arena Ministries family. God bless you all and welcome once again to today's Sunday service. Grace Arena Ministries, transforming lives, maximizing potentials. God bless you.
very warm welcome from wherever you're watching us across the globe. This is Grace Arena Ministries International, where we transform lives and maximize potential. At Grace Arena Ministries, we are one big family, and we are connected by love, word, prayer, service, excellence and discipleship that is right welcome to another edition of testimonies because at this altar we pray and testimonies do follow indeed testimonies signs and wonders are the order of the day we are reminded in the book of revelation 12 11 they overcame now that's the devil by the blood of the lamp and the words of their testimonies that's right and that takes us to the first testimony of the day yes from a lady called helen mm -hmm. so here's what helen says mm. greetings prophets mm -hmm. my god has done wonders without numbers as you made declarations on Grace Hour from the story of Mordecai, uh -huh. I placed a desperate demand for help to clear the backlog that had accumulated mm -hmm. due to an organizational system change. Wow. There was a threatening deadline issued from the high authority, mm -hmm. which was not possible for me. I made a prayer for favor, mm. for divine assistance, uh -huh. prophet, a branch manager, yes. left his executive office mm -hmm. and came down to sit in a satellite office for three days, wow. helping us clear the pending work. Uh -huh. Power day this altar. Uh -huh. Prophet, your God is worth it all. Our God is worth it all. At all. Divine favor for real. Yes. A whole branch manager leaving his office to come and help for three days. That is divine favor. True. That is how you, con when you connect to an altar that speaks, you find everything in your life just aligns. True. That reminds me of the story of uh, Mordecai yeah. and the king, mm -hmm. how he was remembered just from nowhere he and he, he got favor and elevation and all that. Okay. Wow. So this takes me to the second testimony of the day. Mm -hmm. It comes from a lady called Kathy mm -hmm. and it says, greetings, Papa. I thank God for his calling upon your life. Mm -hmm. Before I joined the gum altar, my sons were totally written off. It, it's not possible to narrate the pain, the shame, and embarrassment they have caused me. When I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you, you assured me that you would not let my children suffer. Mm -hmm. To the glory of God, when my son stepped onto the gum altar, mm -hmm. you prayed and made pronouncements over their lives. Mm -hmm. They received deliverance, wow. and their lives have tremendously transformed. Wow. Today, they fellowship at the GAM sanctuary. Wow. wow. That is so nice. Yeah. That's the power of having a spiritual cover, a spiritual yeah. authority, because they received deliverance. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was not for our spiritual covering or them having our apostle as a spiritual covering, yeah, yeah. only God knows what would have happened. Only God knows. That's why we are told, encouraged, sometimes we just write the names of our family members and come and place them on the altar. Because as you get delivered, you also need to make sure your family is also delivered. Sure. Yes, and that is how we do it as a, as, that is the joy of salvation. Mm -hmm. When you find you are delivered, you are, you are, your family is delivered, and everything just runs smoothly in your sure. family. Sure. Yeah, so that's very like powerful takes us to the third testimony of the day. Yes. It comes from a lady called Janet, mm -hmm. and here's what Janet says. Greetings, Papa. Mm. God has been so gracious unto me. Mm. I called you in the first semester, and she prayed for my daughter as she was going to write her exams. Mm. God came through for her. She scored two Bs and one A. Mm. Last semester, she got encouraged and added two more units. I told her the same God that did it for you the previous semester would do it again for her. Mm. I am here to testify that the results are out. She scored one A and four Bs to the glory of God. My other daughter had a dislocation. I mm. called you and you prayed. I'm happy to testify that she is healed. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Papa, for your prayers. Wow. May the Lord increase you in Jesus' name. Amen and like amen. Her, wow, this is so nice. There is wisdom. Mm, like yeah. It's not normal for someone to just get out to, to upgrade that fast in... Um, in a small span of time. You told she even added units. No, she even added units. So uh, that is just favor mm -hmm. and the right connection to an altar that speaks again. Yeah. So this takes me to the last uh, testimony of the day, and it says, Greetings, Papa. Mm -hmm. I recently traveled to Canada. Mm -hmm. I thank God for connecting me to this altar because the grace is working. Mm -hmm. God has been sending me help from strangers in every step of my way. Wow. Words can't express how grateful I am by his doing. May the oil on your head never run dry. Yes, 
and we were told by Papa to connect in a season. There's a time he was making declaration of people to take passports, people to connect, uh, to pray about, uh, to give seeds rather for international favor. And I can say this is a child who actually was in that season and he spoke for her. But this altar is very fertile when it comes to international favor uh -huh. and international doors opening. Yes. Wow, this is so nice. So you can also be part of this uh, story. All you need to do is connect to the man of God through his various social medias displayed uh, below the screen. That's right. And we also have two services. Yeah. Our empowerment service, which is our first service mm -hmm. that runs from 9 a.m. up to 11.30 a.m. And our second oily service, mm -hmm. our prophetic healing and deliverance service, runs from 3 p.m. up to 7 p.m. We are located on Bungoma Road, mm -hmm. that is off Baricho Road, behind Kafo Mega. Come and partake of this anointing. So as we wrap up, remember, on this altar, we pray and testimonies do follow. That's right. Hatu Chesi to, to Naomba. Naomba. We do not play on this altar. We pray. Grace in motion. Angels in, in motion. motion. God, God bless you. To our spiritual covering. Our Papa. Our prophet, we wish you a happy birthday. May you live long and prosper. Amen.
Okay, I can read from my phone. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, um, from verse 6, says that, uh, remember, remember this, Okay, it's here. Remember, now remember this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously, that is, that blessings may come to others, will also reap generously and be blessed. Verse 7. Let us, let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not gladly or under compassion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and delights that is delights in the one whose heart is in is whose heart is is gift. Uh, there are two things here that Apostle Paul was talking about here. There are two things about giving here. The first thing is about sowing, in verse six, and then in verse seven is about uh, the attitude of your heart as you give. So in sowing, the Bible says that whatever you sow is what you harvest. You, if you sow, um, if you plant. Uh, maize or corn, you cannot expect to harvest beans from that farm. What you sow is what you harvest. And you cannot harvest from somewhere that you do not sow. So whatever you sow, as you plant, as you give your offering, whatever you give, the Bible says that it will come back to you. You'll sow that what you gave. And the second thing in verse 7, it's about the attitude of your heart. What is the attitude of your heart as you give this, this afternoon? The Lord says that he loves a cheerful giver. Your heart should be cheerful. Your heart should be a heart that is not with any doubts, worries about what you are giving. You don't have to give and start thinking about that, what you've already given about, uh, what you've given already. You don't have to worry. The Lord says that he... The Bible says that he delights in the one whose heart is his gift. So when your heart is um, cheerful, that means you've given your heart to God and these are gifts that you're giving to God. So the attitude of our heart also matters in our giving. So as you give tonight, as you give this evening, give from a heart or that is cheerful and know that whatever you give is what you sow in the name of Jesus. So just prepare your, your, your offering, prepare your seed. Prepare that what you should give. I mean, that what you pre you've decided. The Bible says that you should decide what you should give also in your heart. No one should coerce you to give, and the Lord shall bless you. Prepare your offering, and let us pray as the worship team comes to bless us again. The giving details shall be projected uh, on the screen. For the tithers, Apostle will pray with you at the, at the, in the course of the service. In the name of Jesus, we are praying now for our offering. Lord, we bless you. Just speak a word to that offering. Speak a word to the seed. Speak a word and expect from God. Expect from him who is able to give you more than you can even give or even think or even imagine. Father, we bless you for our giving this evening. We thank you, Lord, for giving us so much. Oh, God, you gave your son for to ask Jehovah and even as we give tonight Father Lord we pray that we shall receive a bountiful harvest Jehovah in the name of Jesus thank you Lord for sowing in us oh Jehovah with your son in the name of Jesus as we give tonight Lord Father forgive us for complaining when we give forgive us for the time that we've given oh God complaining and worrying and not cheerfully in the name of Jesus Father we bless you accept our offering accept us in the name of Jesus we pray and believe amen Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, this afternoon we are blessed as a church. Um, we have one of the amazing artists all the way from Nigeria. You know, somebody has flown all the way from Nigeria for our father's birthday. He came to celebrate our daddy's birthday with him. Yeah, all the way from Nigeria. And, and those of you who don't know him, let me let me remind you of the person who is here. Ah, yeah. This kind God. Now the owner of the song is here. Hey, Pastor Les, it looks like we have a lot of new members in this church. They were not here when he came here. <laughs> I say so he has come all the way from Nigeria to celebrate our father's birthday are you ready for him yeah. 
Let's put our hands together on your feet. Let's stand on our feet. And welcome, Minister Folabi. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm back home. Pastor, good to see you again. Sir. <laughs> and um, I want to say I love this family a lot because if I get 20 people on my social media asking me, when next are you coming to Kenya? Eight of the 20 people are from this place. <laughs> oh, sorry, 18 of the 20 people are from this house. So I, I feel really honored that you guys love me so much. And I love you guys so much. Amen. All right, I want us to do something this evening. Um, believing God that we'll be able to take this journey gradually to where God will want to take us. Amen. All right, so I want you to just lift up your hands and thanksgiving just say thank you Jesus for all that you have done thank you Jesus for this amazing opportunity to celebrate a legend an icon of God's glory someone God is using in this season and generation to touch lives to change lives to glorify his name to draw men to himself Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. See what the Lord has done. Thanksgiving say see what the Lord has done. With thanksgiving for what he is doing in this season, we say.
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We behold. We behold the We behold.
blessing and I will just go. But in case you are participating, as the presence is falling upon us and we are breathing as if we are drunk in the Holy Ghost, then you will experience a transformation. one you probably have expected for 10, 20 years is coming to pass right now in the name of Jesus. So you have to jump into this because there's about to be a transformation. The type that you have not experienced before. See, anything can happen in the presence of God. That's right. You better plug it. See, I know there are a set of people you've been feeling this warmth in the middle of your palm and you are here. It's a new anointing coming upon you. And if you have been feeling it, just put your hands on your chest and repeat after me. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord will be seen throughout the world through me through me the glory and the power of the Lord will be seen in my life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I'm a carrier of the presence of the most high God I'm a carrier of the manifest presence of the most high God I'm a carrier the glory of the Lord and the carrier of the power of the Lord and the carrier of the grace of the Lord and the carrier of the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ay, yo, yo, yo. Ay, yo, yo, yo. 
Raise your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor today, today, whether the devil likes it or not, I shall praise my God. I shall praise my God. It doesn't matter my problems. It doesn't matter my problems. I shall praise my God. I shall praise my God. It doesn't matter my bank, uh, uh, my account balance. It doesn't matter my account balance. I shall praise my God. I shall praise my God. It doesn't matter my relationship status. Hey! Hey! I shall praise my God. I shall praise my God. Come on, give the Lord a shout! Now walk to three people, greet them, hug them, and tell them it's good to see you in the house of the Lord.
your neighbor. Neighbor. Don't shout and say neighbor. Don't look, ask your neighbor. No, no, hold on, hold on. Let's do what we did. Look at somebody you don't know and ask them, what is your name? Ask them your name. Ask them, ask them, what is your name? Just them, ask them, what, what is your name? Tell them, where do, ask them, where do you work? Ask them where, where, what their name is, where they work, where they live. Hallelujah. Ask them whether you can give them a job. Or you, you, you have a business for me. Ask them.
Hallelujah. Now, we have brought you greetings from West Africa. Hallelujah. So now we are coming to the east. Tell you the we are coming to the east. The east. Are there lawyers in the house? Yeah. Hey. No, are there lawyers in the house? Hey. Lawyers, can you give us one song? Yes. Hold on, 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 hold on. Now, when you guys come and you are dancing, please be moderate. Tell your neighbor, be moderate. Yes, God bless you. Louis, let's go. Matai Kayasu, Kachiranga Jenda.
Kalenjins, Masai's. Okay, then let's finalize with the Kikuyus. Kikuyus, get on the stage. Kambas. Oh, Kambas. Uh, let, let's Kikuyus finish, then Kambas will come. Kambas, they have a special dance, so.
worship. We ask that you speak to us and we shall be spoken on. Do we thank you for the lives that have gathered in here? We thank you for the gift of life, for your grace that you have bestowed unto men. We ask that you have your way in this meeting. Speak to us and we shall be spoken on to. In Jesus' matchless name, have you prayed and everyone shouted and said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated in the heavenly places. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is a special Sunday. Uh, service is done to honor and also celebrate my birthday, which was on the 4th of April. That is Thursday. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for the gift of life and adding one more year to my years. Amen. Come on, let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. And we honor God for every one of you also that sent gifts, those that prayed for me on the birthday, those that sent me wonderful, nice text messages. Everything that you did to support that birthday, I pray that may the good Lord richly bless you. I receive. Every prayer you made, may God give you a double of that. I receive. Every gift you gave, may God give you a double of that. I receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, every wish that you wished for me, may God bless you with that same wish in Jesus' name. I receive. Amen and uh, amen. Amen. In the morning, we studied on uh, honor. Just want to reiterate a few things. And uh, we will, I'm continuing from that same topic under the subject of honor. Um, but I'm not going to go through everything we said in the morning. I'm just pushing through. So you will not miss anything in case you were not in the morning service. Don't worry. Um, you, I'm picking it from where um, I'll pick it from where um, 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 no one has heard. So it's not like um, you'll be missing anything. I'll just reiterate a few points in the morning and then we push it from there until the end because today is the day of honor. Amen? Amen. So the best sermon to hear is on honor. Tell your neighbor and say honor. Honor. And for your information, by the grace of God, um, I mean, the next few months, we'll be moving to three services. Tell your neighbor to three services. So three services. Yeah, so we'll be having the first service from 7 um, to 9.30, second service to 12.30 from 9.30, and then the third service to 2. And also, the second service that we are having now, we are moving it from 3 to 2. Tell your neighbor to 2. To 2. Yeah, so down the second service from um, May, we will be having it from 2. Tell your neighbor from 2. So the latest by 6, we are out of here. Amen? Amen. Is it a good thing? Yes. Yeah, so we will, instead of having the second service from 3, we are, will be starting from 2, so that um, by 6, we will latest, we will be out of here. Amen? Amen. Because we realized that last week, it was possible for us to close five by 5.30. Last week, a time like this, we had already closed. Amen? Yeah, so please just um, prepare your heart and prepare yourself for what God has in store. And I know for sure you are going to be tremendously blessed. Amen. Amen. Shout, I receive the word. I receive the word. I believe the word. I believe the word. I work on the word. I work on the word. The word works on me. The word works on Say me. Say it again. I receive the word. I receive the word. I believe the word. I believe the word. I work on the word. I work on the word. The word works on me. The word works on so me. So in the morning we said honor is to think well of a person, to help someone, to praise someone, to hold someone with high respect or hold someone in high esteem. Tell your neighbor and say honor. Honor. Yes, so we defined honor in the first service. Like I said, I'm not repeating everything that was said in the first service. I'm just trying to make sure at least those of us in the second service will be up to speed. Amen? Amen. Yes. And I said, uh, 
Honor is to think well of a person, to help a person, to praise someone, to hold someone in high esteem. Next slide. Um, 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 let's go on. When we say you honor someone, it means you think well of them, you hold them in high esteem, and you respect them. And uh, scripture requires us to honor certain people in our lives. And the first person that God requires us to honor is him, Jehovah. Tell your neighbor and say, honor God. Honor God. Now shout it and say, honor God. Honor God. The Bible requires us to give uh, utmost honor to Jehovah. God requires us to honor him in every way possible. And uh, when we read First Samuel chapter 20, verses 30, let's go into scripture right now. First Samuel chapter 20, verses 30. First Samuel 20 verses 30. First Samuel, sorry, first Samuel chapter 2, verses 20. Verses 30. First Samuel 2, 30. Yes, shall we read? One go. Let, let's read. One go. Mm-hmm. God says, those who honor me, I, Jehovah, I will. Honor. And those who despise me, the Amplified says, I am, I'm, he will hold you as insignificant. You would not be, say, you'll be like an entity before God. So God requires us to honor him. Tell your neighbor and say, honor him. Honor him. Tell your neighbor and say, honor him. Honor him. Yeah, it is a requirement by God that we honor him in every way possible. Now, when you read Revelation chapter 5, verses 11, the Bible makes us understand all the innumerable company of angels in heaven, all that they are doing is to say honor, praise, dominion, and power to you to the lamb that is seated on the throne. In other words, in heaven, the angels, all they are doing is to honor Jesus, to honor the Lord, give him praise, extol his holy name, and that is what they are doing. And I want you to read um, 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 the scripture. One, let's read one, go. Mm -hmm. And what were they doing? Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Our Lord deserves honor. All the innumerable angels, the elders in heaven, all that they are saying is that Lord, you deserve honor. You deserve to be praised. You deserve to be adored. That is all that they are doing in heaven. And God requires us also to honor him in that regard. And the second um, people that God also requires us to honor is our parents. Tell your neighbor and say our parents. Our parents. God requires you to honor your parents. We talked about it in the morning with your actions, with your words, with your money, and with your life. And uh, it is sad that these days church folk really respect their quote and unquote spiritual father more than their biological father. Just because they feel and think that their biological father is a drunkard. So they don't give him the honor that is due him. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what you think your biological father is or who you think he is. Regardless of what they do or have or do not have, they deserve your utmost honor. Tell your neighbor they deserve to be honored. They deserve to be because honored. Because see, ladies and gentlemen, if you disrespect your mother and you come to church and you want to honor a spiritual mother, it is 
improper because the woman carried you in her womb for nine months there were things she went through at the labor ward she almost died but you have the audacity the impudence the infantry to disrespect a woman that carried you in her womb for nine months and you come to the church and you want to bow down to a pastor ladies and gentlemen that is mm. out of order mm. you need to get to a place and know that regardless of what you think your mother did or didn't do yes. she deserves honor. Amen. And sometimes I was saying in the morning that you know, your mother will call you for only 2,000. Oh, my daughter, can you send me 2,000? Do you think money is on the streets? You start shouting at your mother just because she requested for 2,000. And some, some, some mumu will call you, baby, can I get 20K? Oh, right now, I'm sending, I'm sending. Shame on you. Tell anybody and say, shame on you. Shame on you. You are shouting at your mother for, 20, for 2K. Somebody just called you baby. You are 40 years old. They called you baby. And because they refer to you as baby, you are ready to send 20,000. Tell anybody and say, mercy. Mercy. So God requires us to honor our parents. Now, give me Ephesians chapter 6. Let's read from verse 1 all the way through to 3. Ephesians 6. Shall we read? 1, go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Obey your parents in the law for this is what? Yeah. You see, this scripture refers to parents in the Lord in as much as it refers to um, biological parents. Amen. Now he goes on to verse 2 and he says, uh -huh. Honor, esteem, and value as precious your father and your mother and be respectful to them for this is the first commandment with a promise uh -huh. what will happen to you if you do that so that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth we've got people dying short i mean short life <laughs> i mean people dying at a tender age just because they refuse to honor their parents tell you anybody and say honor Honor. God requires you to show your father and mother with utmost respect so that it may be well with you. How many of you want it to be well with you? You want, you to, you want to live long on the earth? God requires you to honor your father. It is good to go to the gym so that you keep faith, but the better gym is honoring your parents. Tell your neighbor and say, honor your parents. So that the Bible says it may be well with you and that you will live long on the earth. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. So the next people that God requires us to honor, I'm not repeating myself, don't worry, I'm just going to jump quickly, is the elderly. Tell anybody and say the elderly. The elderly. So scripture requires us to honor, number one, God, number two, um, parents, number three, the elderly, yes. The Bible says honor the elderly. Scripture requires us to honor the elderly. You know, when an elderly person comes to um, 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 you find yourself in the same matter too and an elderly person is coming, sometimes it's good you get up and let them sit. When you see a pregnant woman, get up and let them sit. These days when children see elderly people, you tell them to get up. You know what they tell you? Are they better human beings than us? You know, they literally want to sit and an old man, an old woman that could be their grandfather or grandmother standing. May God have mercy on the church. Amen. 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 Yes, so the scripture is on the screen. Let me just jump quickly. Number four, the fourth person that God requires us to honor is your boss. Stay in the bed and say your boss. Your boss. Say your boss. Your boss. Yes, the Bible says that employees must honor honor and esteem their employers. That is what the scripture says. If you go through it, we talked about it in the morning. The sermon is already on YouTube. If you want to check the morning service, you can check it on YouTube and find it there and you shall be blessed. Scripture requires us to honor. Tell your neighbor and say honor. honor. Shout it and say honor. honor. Shout it and say honor. honor. 
Yes. Scripture requires us to honor our bosses. Now, the next people that God requires us to honor are those in authority. Tell your neighbor, those in authority. Those in authority. Scripture requires us to honor those in authority. Scripture requires us that everybody that is in authority, we are expected to honor them. And the interesting bit that this scripture said, I think I want to repeat this scripture because it was a very good scripture. Um, can we repeat... Um, Romans, because there are some people who didn't come for the morning service who are here. Who needs to hear this? Now, 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 give me the scripture in. <laughs> give me the scripture in. Now, let's read uh, Romans thirteen verse seven. Now, let's go. Let's go. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's go to let's take this scripture in NIV. Let's take the scripture in NIV. Mm -hmm. No, no, hold on, hold on there. Read it loud and clear. One go. The Bible says, give everyone what you... No, no, please. Are we reading the Bible? Yeah. So why are you... Is, is that, the people that are not reading, it's a sign that you owe me. Please, if you owe me, make sure you honor. I, I wanted us to read this so that at least, at least, if you owe me, this is what the Bible, the word of God is telling us. One, go, give everyone what you owe him. If anyone owe taxes, pay if revenue, uh huh, uh huh, anybody that deserves your honor, the word of God requires us to honor them. Tell your neighbor and say, honor those in authority. Honor those who are in authority. Shall we say, honor those in authority? Honor those who are in authority. Shall we say, honor those in authority? Honor those who are in authority. The last people scripture demands us to honor is. Uh, our parents in the Lord and our church leaders. Scripture requires us to honor our church leaders. Tell anybody and say honor church leaders. Honor church leaders. Honor your father in the Lord. Honor your father in the Lord. See, there are people that they have honor for the man of God, but they feel like any other pastor they don't honor or respect them. If you honor me and you dishonor my pastors, it's equal to dishonoring me. Are we together? Yes, sir. You cannot say, oh, as for the man of God, I honor him, but as for um, Pastor Lanya, who is Pastor? I used to be with him in Eldoret. I mean, it is a sign of dishonor. Tell your neighbor and say, it's a sign of dishonor. It's a sign of dishonor. Every leader in this ministry requires, you, requires your honor and demands your honor. You are expected to honor every single leader in the church, even your departmental leaders, even your cell leaders. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anybody that is in spiritual leadership or is a church leader in any capacity, scripture demands that you give them the honor that is due them. Amen? Amen. Yes. Now let's read um, 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 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 12 from the Passion Translation. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12. 1 Thessalonians. Shall we read? One go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it says again, Dear brothers and sisters, make sure that you show deep what? For those who cherish you and diligently work as who? Did he only say pastors? As ministers among you, for they are your leaders who care for you, teach you, and stand before God on your behalf. They stand before God on your behalf. So they demand your respect they demand your 
honor. When you read Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 from the NLT, the Bible says, talks at me, and talks about our spiritual leaders, and it's so, so interesting. And let, let, let's, let's read it. What go? Obey your spiritual leaders mm -hmm. and do what they say. Mm -hmm. The work is to watch over your souls and do not The Bible says, obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your soul. Uh -huh. And what? And they know they are accountable to? They are not accountable to you. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Yeah. So, if you, you demand an explanation for something that you think your, the Bible says, who is he that judges another man's servant? They are called God's servants. So the one that they are accountable to is God, God not you. Are we together? Yes, sir. Are we here? Yes, sir. Yes, so scripture demands us to honor our spiritual parents. And how do we honor? Number one, how to honor fathers in the Lord. And I made some points and I just want to run through them quickly and I still have five minutes to do this um, 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 reiteration of what I've said in the morning. Number one, the anointing you respect will benefit you. Write it down, take a notebook and pen. If you're coming to church or you have an iPad or you can make notes on your phone, the challenge, um, the disadvantage of making notes on your phone is that as you are making the notes, some um, will test you says says who is Lucy and by the time you read that test you will be completely confused are you getting what I'm saying yes sir. yes so that is why we avoid using your phone in the house of God but if you can be disciplined enough to focus and write write it down the anointing you respect will what the anointing you honor will bless your life. now the anointing you honor will bless you the anointing you believe in will work miracles, miracles for you. If you want an anointing to work miracles for you, you need to believe in the anointing. Number four, the anointing you desire, you are trapped. Yes. I mean, see, when I was on campus, I desired an anointing that was upon the man that taught me to preach. I was studying engineering and uh, the guy was studying pharmacy. He was a pharmacy student. I was an engineering student. And uh, one day I was passing by one of the halls of residence and there, there was a, a service going on there. And I heard a guy preach and he preached with so much charisma. And I passed by and I entered the auditorium, stood at the back and watched him. And right after the service, I went to him and said, Sir, can you teach me how to preach like you? And ladies and gentlemen, I desired the anointing on his life and I followed after him. And uh, I became more like a houseboy to him because I will wash his clothes. I will cook for him. I will, he will send me around to run errands. I, will, I mean, everything that anybody could do for someone, I was doing for him. And later, guess what? I attracted the anointing upon his life. In my service to him, he impacted me with the grace upon him, and I began to preach like him. I mean, I was, when I got to second year, people thought I was in final year because I was preaching too much on the campus. I mean, I was invited a lot and some of the invitations were his invitations. He would not go and he would send me to go. And guess what? Because of the fact that I desired the anointing upon his life, I began to operate like him. Mm. Sometimes when he's preaching, somebody might think that I am the one preaching. When I am preaching and you are not seeing the person and you are outside, you might think he's the one preaching. Our voice even sounded the same. Why? Because I honored him and I desired the grace that is upon his life. Anytime you desire the anointing upon a man, you attract that anointing. Yes. When you dishonor the grace upon a man, you can never be like the person. Mm. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. What, what do I mean by dishonor? You see, most people, there are people that have gone ahead of you. 
And instead of you to honor the graces that have gone ahead of you, what you do is that you dishonor them and you can never be like them. You talk bad against people that have gone ahead of you. You disrespect those that have gone ahead of you. Guess what? You can never be like them. Mm. Are we together? Yes, sir. I said the anointing number six. Let me quickly. Yeah, number five. The anointing you become familiar with cannot can do what? Nothing for you. When you become familiar with an anointing, it cannot help you. And this is what I do. I said it in the morning. When I realize that somebody has become too familiar with me, I draw back. I withdraw. It is not in bad sense. It is to help you so that my anointing can still work for you. Because you see, when you, somebody becomes too familiar with you, the anointing stops from working. The anointing on the anointed man does not stop, but you stop yourself from receiving from the anointing. Did you hear what I said? Yes. When you become familiar with an anointing, the anointing on the man is still there. It will work for others, but it will not work for you. Why? Because you become too familiar. Now, if you have a Bible, raise it up. Let me show you something. Or a notebook or anything you can read. I want to illustrate something to you. Lift it up. Now, bring it closer to your eyes. Everybody, closer. Closer to you. Just take it closer. Closer. Take it closer. Take it closer to your eyes. Closer. Just take it closer. Still closer. Closer. Can you read now? Why? You can't read. The reason why sometimes you can't receive from a man is because you are too close. Turn him and say, you are too close. You are too close. Yeah, when you become too close, you tend to become familiar without even you realizing. So the anointing on the man's life will be working for others, but it may not work for you. You feel like, oh, I mean, I'm not getting blessed. Nothing is happening. Everything is happening. You are the one that is not getting blessed. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yes. And number six, the anointing you are skeptical about cannot help you. When you now you are now beginning to think, ah, is he from God or from the devil? No, he's from your village. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> hey. I'm the only one that can say some of these things here in this city. <laughs> the anointing you are skeptical about cannot help you. When you are skeptical about an anointing, it can help you. You are trying to second guess or trying to check him out or size him up. You are wasting your time. Amen? Amen. See, I always say you may not like a man of God, but respect the anointing he carries. Mm. There are men of God I personally don't like, but I respect the oil they carry. See, liking someone is different from honoring someone. God requires us to love everybody, but God does not require us to befriend everybody. Befriending someone is your own decision, but God requires you to love everyone. Are, we hearing, are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah, so even if you don't like that man of God that you think you don't like for your own personal reasons, which may possibly be baseless, you still got to honor the grace they carry. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yes. And, 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 and uh, let's go to honoring. How to honor? Quickly. Place a demand on the anointing. I'm not talking about that. If you want to honor an anointing, place a demand. Learn how to place a demand on the anointing. I talked about that extensively in the morning, so I'm not repeating it. Number two, if you want to honor an anointing, have a right perception of the anointing. Tell your neighbor, have a right perception. Have a right perception. See, have a right perception. Have a right perception. See, if I invite Benny Hinn to this church and you are coming to the service, what will you be expecting? Healing. What will you be expecting? Healing. Why? Because Pastor Benny Hinn is a healing evangelist. So you expect miracles and healing. When you, if I invite um, Nathaniel Bassi to the church, what will you be expecting? Worship. Why? Because he's a worship minister. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes. If I am standing here to speak to you, what will you be expecting? See. Yeah, because I operate in the prophetic. So, your perception of a person or of an anointing determines your reception of that anointing. 
And let me, ladies and gentlemen, perception is the new reality. You better have a better perception of an anointed man for you to be able to receive from that anointed. Are we together? Yes, sir. When Jesus checked into Nazareth, the Bible said that Jesus could not. He couldn't do miracles because the people in Nazareth saw him as a carpenter. And as a carpenter, the only thing Jesus could give them was tables and chairs, furniture. Because carpenters don't work miracles. And the Bible says that the anointing could not work. Let's read that scripture. Mark chapter 6. Shall we read from the top of your voice from verse 1? Mm -hmm. Now hold on then. Go back. The Bible says... Jesus began, when people heard of him, they were astonished. Why? Because they know him. The Bible said, they asked, where did he get all this wisdom and power to perform such miracles? Uh -huh. Next verse. He's just what? He didn't say he's a carpenter's son. He is just a carpenter. The son of Mary and the brother of James, James Joseph, Joseph, Judas, Judas, and Simon, and his sisters live right here among us. They know even his sisters, his brothers. So they could not receive from him because we know you, we saw you grow up. The only thing we know is that you are a carpenter, nothing else. So they began to despise the grace on his life. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to relate with people based on the knowledge you have of them of the past. Mm. Oh my God, did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. You don't have to relate with someone based on your knowledge of them of the past. Whether last year or two years ago or three years ago, it doesn't mean they are still the same John you used to know. They are not the same James you used to know. They are not the same Mary you used to know. You've got to understand within even a month, God can change people. Amen. Did anybody say neighbor? Neighbor. Don't judge me for my past. Don't judge me for my past. I've changed. I've changed. God has changed me. God has changed me. Because all they knew of Jesus is that he's a carpenter, nothing else. So they could not receive from him. Mm. The Bible said they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Did you see that? Yes. The last part, they were one. Read one. They were, they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Why? Because they know this dude as a carpenter. Next verse. Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. You see, the people that don't get blessed by anointed man are the people that know him. That's why I always say I don't like my classmates in my church. You know why? Because my classmates, like especially those from high school, they know all the bad things I used to do and all those things. You know, they go like, hey, David. <laughs> Are you guessing what I'm saying? Yes. yes. I think I only have at least one Dr. Carl, but at least even him, he didn't see much of <laughs> the other part of me because him, he was a good boy. Some of us were. Bad is an understatement. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> So, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is difficult for people that know you too well to receive from you. Mm. And you see, familiarity is the greatest enemy of the anointed. Did you hear what I said? Familiarity is the greatest enemy of the anointing. Now, verse 5. Hear verse 5 and then we can go on. And shall we read one go? Uh-huh. Now, hold it there. The Bible says, and because of their own belief, he couldn't do. There's a difference between he didn't do and he couldn't do. He couldn't do means the anointing could not work. He didn't do means he didn't want to do. But he couldn't do means the anointing couldn't work. Why? Because of their own belief and their familiarity. Mm-hmm. 
Imagine the one that raised the deaf couldn't raise death anymore. The one that opened blind eyes couldn't open blind eyes anymore. Why? Because they had become too familiar with the grace that is upon his life. May God deliver you from familiarity. I receive. I said, may God deliver you from familiarity. I receive. Yes. Next, next, let's go back to slides. Yes, so you need to have the right perception. Uh -huh. Let's go. See, when you become too familiar, what is the meaning of familiarity? Familiarity is when you get to know someone so well in such a way that you use your sense of admiration, respect, or value that you have for the person. You've come to know the person so well. Like I always say, when somebody tells me, oh, that one, I know him too well. I will make sure you don't know me. Yeah. You withdraw. You give them a gap. Because you see, it stops your anointing from working for them. See, familiarity causes us not to record, realize the greatness and the value of the anointing that is, not, that is upon a person. You see, people are getting healed of cancer stage 4 in this house. People are getting healed of HIV. They are testifying in this house. The dumb spoke. The other day, the lady gave a testimony, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. A dumb child comes here, cannot even speak, but after prayer at this altar, the child goes home speaking. And you, you are here. You have tummy ache. It cannot go. You need deliverance. Are we together? Yes. The greatest enemy of the anointing is familiarity. Let's go to the next one. Now, if you want to... Now, I think we got here. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah, the morning. So, now I'm going to start speaking. Everything I said, because it was said in the morning. Now, if you want to honor an anointing, speak well of the anointing. Speak well of the anointing. Speak well of the anointing. We go to number four, right? Speak well of the anointing. What time is it? It is 6. 6 p.m. If it's 6 and you are sleeping, you need prayer. If you can literally doze over under this anointing, my God. Okay, in our new church, we have coffee machines. Yeah, the new church we have, you have coffee machines. Are there? Now, the coffee machine, it is, it is a special coffee machine. You, you switch it on with your fingerprint and you only have ones. So, see... <laughs> You put it on with your fingerprint. Yeah, it's from the UK. You put it on your fingerprint. You can only take once. Because some people can come take one coffee, take another coffee, take another coffee. No. They drink the whole coffee. <laughs> yeah, so we have coffee machines on the stand so that you can just quickly help yourself in case you want to um, um, take some coffee. Amen? Amen? The new church, tell you, it is going to be awesome. Tell you about awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So now let's go. If you want to honor an anointing, speak well of the anointing. Now let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3 reading from verses. Now I'm, I'm beginning to speak. I'll be done in 20 minutes. So please focus. Amen? Yes, sir. Everything I said, I said it in the morning. But these things I have not spoken about them. So please be, be attentive. Those of you watching online, please share the link and invite somebody to connect with us. Now, Solomon is speaking. How many of you know Solomon? Solomon, Papa Solo. How many of you know Papa Solo? Yes, Papa Solo. Some of you, you're, you, are, you have Papa Solos in your house. Solomon was the son of David. Solomon had 300 wives and 700 concubines. So if you have a brother who is going around, marry, 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 marry. Just call them this one, Papa Solo, Papa Solo. <laughs> It's called Papa Solo. That is their nickname. Now let's go on. Now, at this time that Solomon was giving this speech, follow me, Solomon had just come to the throne. He had just been appointed and anointed as king and God asked him a question. And he began to speak to God and ask God for wisdom. Now, hear the wisdom of Solomon. Uh-huh. Read, uh -huh. Read it one go. And so uh -huh. You have shown me great mercy. David. Mm -hmm. Hold it there. Hold it there. Now, Solomon is speaking to God. And he's making a statement to Jehovah God. And he tells God in heaven, who knows everything? That you have shown great mercy to my to your servant David, my father, number one, because he walked before you in truth. 
and in righteousness. Solomon, who are you talking to? And who are you talking about here? David. I mean, are we lost? Solomon is speaking to God and he's telling God that his father walked in truth and in righteousness. Solomon, you don't know what you are saying. No, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Solomon is giving God a statement and he tells God, my father was a righteous man. He walked in truth before you. The same David that took somebody's wife and killed the husband on top. Solomon is giving a report to God and tells Jehovah God. He had the audacity to stand before God and say, my father was a righteous man. Ladies and gentlemen, and it doesn't, God does not rebuke Solomon for that statement. Now let's continue to hear what Solomon says. Uh -huh. And in uprightness of heart with you, you have continued. Let's read from there. One go. To sit on his throne as it is this day. Uh -huh. Now, O oh Lord, you. Is able to judge this great people. Now, here the Bible said, Now, this is the part that shocks me. One go, their speech pleased the Lord. Now, hold it there. The speech of Solomon, starting by saying that his father was a righteous man and all that drama, the Bible said, The speech pleased the Lord. Why? Because Solomon knew his background. He was Solomon is the son of Bathsheba. Solomon knew his background but regardless of his background he didn't go and say Lord you know my father was a bad man you know my father did this and did that and did that and did that he approaches God and forget about anything bad his father has done but still makes a presentation and say my father was a righteous man that walked in truth and uprightness of heart and the Bible says end the speech please the Lord hmm and the only reason why God will make a man like Solomon sit on the throne is you see the Bible says for those he foreknew he also prayed this time God knew that if Solomon is given the opportunity to speak he will not speak about any bad thing his father did he will speak about the only right things his father did God looks at the heart of all the sons of David remember David had seven wives before Bathsheba came on top Bathsheba making it eight. All of them had children. But why would God choose Solomon, the wife of someone who um, 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 who's a, a woman whose husband was killed and taken a, a child from that woman to sit on the throne? God understood one thing about Solomon, that if I give this man the throne, he will not come and speak bad things about authority. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah, so he's giving a presentation and he speaks and the Bible says, and the speech pleased the Lord. It pleased the Lord. Why? Because he presented something that God looked at and said, this is a man that deserves to be set on the throne. Let me tell you, if you want to sit on a throne, others have sat. Learn how to speak well of them. Wow. Did you hear what I said? They are six you have never sat. Look at him. That guy is a thief. He has stolen money. Which money did, you steal? did he steal? Our COA, he has been siphoning money. Did you see him? You want to become a CEO? You are speaking bad about a CEO. Hey, all these politicians, they are thieves. Who told you? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Learn how to honor authority. Tell your name and say, honor authority. Authority. So if you want to honor someone, learn how to speak of the person. Now you see, how many of us believe in Jesus? Jesus, you believe in Jesus? Yeah. Jesus was is our savior, isn't it? He is our healer, he is our deliverer, he is everything else that you can think of. But do you think everybody think of that about Jesus? No. 
Everyone does not think of the same as your deliverer. You tell, you tell Jesus, somebody says, it's another name. The Pharisees and the scribe called Jesus a deceiver. But to you, he is your Messiah. So if somebody is calling your helper a deceiver and you are also joining the bandwagon and calling the person names, guess what? It, that grace cannot work for you. The Pharisees called Jesus a deceiver. Someone that eats and drinks with sinners. And all sort of names. Give me Matthew chapter 12 verses 22 to 23. Shall we read one go? Shall we read one go? Mm -hmm. now, oh, thank you. I love this scripture. And this is what we see in this country very often. The Bible says, they brought a man to him and the man got healed. The man was demon possessed blind and mute. The person got healed. He healed them. And so the blind and mute spoke and saw. I hear who healed them? Who, who are they talking about here? Uh, please, who are they talking about here? Jesus healed the demon possessed, blind and mute person. Next verse. Hear what happens in the next verse. And all the multitude were amazed and said, could this be the son of David? Uh-huh. Now, shall we read one go? This fellow does not cast out demons. Can you imagine that? They are saying Jesus healing the blind man, casting out demons. He's operating with the spirit of Beelzebub. And that is the narrative people have out there. To you, he's your healer. To you, he's your deliverer. To you, he's everything. But somebody sees your Jesus that you believe in as someone who is the ruler of demons. And in the same way, in these days, when somebody works miracles and heals the sick and operates in a gifting and an anointing, others cannot operate in. They start to criticize the voice and the person. Why? Just because you cannot operate in a certain grace does not mean others can't operate in that grace. And that is what the Pharisees were doing. And there are so many Pharisees around here, within this country, around, just because they can't operate in a certain grace. Oh, this one we don't believe. Oh, this one is not working. Ladies and gentlemen, you, when you speak like that to a grace and an anointing that is working, you are like a Pharisee. You are like the same group of people that were speaking against Jesus in the days of of old. Say, this fellow does not cast out demons except by what? Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yeah? And the same Pharisees called Jesus a deceiver, a con man. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah, it's in your Bible. Just that you don't read. Let's go to the next scripture. Let's go to the next scripture. Take your bus to the slides quickly. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 62. Now, I want us to read this particular scripture. We are reading Matthew 28, 62 to 64. Shall we read? One, Matthew 28, 62 to 64. Oh. Okay, hold on there. 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 Okay. Take me back to the previous scripture as I find that for you. Matthew 27, sorry. 62. Matthew 27, 62. Shall we read one go? Mm -hmm. Now hold on there. The Bible says Jesus has been crucified and the next day the chief priests and the Pharisees they went to Pilate. Now Jesus 
before he died said on the third day he will resurrect and that was the narrative that was what the pharisees and the scribes and the sadducees all of them knew that the man has said that when he die in three days time he will resurrect so the bible said the pharisees gathered to themselves together and went to Pilate. why were they going to Pilate? let's listen uh-huh saying sir we remember how who said how who said how who said who are they calling deceiver jesus our messiah they are calling our messiah a deceiver a con man that in the simple contemporary english he calling him a deceiver a con man and that is the man we call our messiah someone else is calling him a deceiver in the same way someone else can refer to your pastor as a deceiver oh yes why because they don't believe in him it's possible someone else may refer to the man you believe in so well another name but the point is it's up to you to decide is your is your messiah a deceiver no he's not in the same way when you hear somebody calling a man of god a name that you know does not pertain to them you don't connect you don't support you don't agree because that is not the name and there will be people who definitely call pastors names men of god names and you see i i always say this if you get into a meeting and somebody is talking bad about me if you cannot defend me shut up did you hear what i said yes sir. keep quiet the least you can do is to keep quiet hey him mm, i know i hear the way he's very rude hey one day i, w- I was in london and then um, i checked into a barber shop and i was you no know, barbers and saloons that is where all the machine in the city goes and then as i entered they were talking about pastors so i was enjoying the talk sitting down and my own turn came i said wow because they don't know me they are See that church in the opposite Tottenham Hospital Stadium. Huh? I mean, our church is opposite the stadium in London. And hey, that pastor, he preaches. He's a powerful preacher. But that church, it is only rich people that goes there. If you don't have a car, you, when you go there, the pastor will not pray for you. I'm like, hey. <laughs> no, I'm saying, hey, that church. No, they are speaking. I mean, I mean, they are saying if you go there and you don't have money, the pastor will not pray for you. If you don't have a car, you cannot go to that church. There it is fashion. The people are displaying who is wearing Louis Vuitton, who is wearing Prada, who is they are talking, and I'm quiet. I felt like talking, I felt like being quiet. So I received a call and I popped out. One of the guys that was in the barber shop knows me. So he was quiet when they were talking, he was trying to signal to them, but the guys were not getting. So when I came back, I saw that the room was quiet. I realized that I am in charge now. Because <laughs> they knew that now, the guy you are talking about is the same guy that is seated there. The room was quiet. You can hear the drop of a pin. I asked them, is everything okay? They said, ah, pastor, everything is okay. <laughs> so you know, pastor, we love you. You know, pastor, I... <laughs> Oh. one day one of my daughters went to a salon in London and then they were talking about, about me and then she said could you please keep quiet if you mention that name here I will beat all of you up and maybe we have to go to prison and police may, may have to come for us because the name you are mentioning you don't even know him and the things you are saying you don't even know what you are talking about The greatest people of honor are the people that know how to speak well of an anointing. Mm. Tell anybody and say, speak well of an anointing. Speak well of an anointing. Say it again. Say, speak well of an anointing. Speak well of an anointing. Say it again. Speak well of an anointing. Speak well of an anointing. Lastly, let me just end with this and we close. If you want to honor an anointing, protect the anointing. Mm. Tell anybody and say protect the anointing. Protect the anointing. If you want to honor a voice that speaks over you, learn how to 
protect the anointed. Now, one of the things that people really forget, and um, as I close, just want to end with this. Men of God, there's nobody called God of God. They are called men of God. Say it again, men of God. Men of God. They are not what? God oh. of God. They are men, men of, God. of God. Now, they are first men before of God. So when you raise your expectations and you feel like they are expected to behave like God of supernatural God. beings for them they don't they cannot they don't drink water they don't eat food. Yes. You see people judge others with their head and they judge themselves with their heart. When you judge someone with your head you are logical you are trying to reason. But when you judge someone with your heart, you are trying to empathize with that person. And sadly enough, uh, many people pretend to be superhumans and so the, the way people judge pastors has become so harsh. Tell anybody and say so harsh. So harsh. Yeah, now let's go to Hebrews chapter 5 verses 1. Shall we read? One go. Shall we read? One go. Now, now the Bible says the word high priest is a contemporary term for a pastor. So I want you to read it like your voice is yours. One go. Now hold it there. Now let's take it slowly. When you read a scripture, you take it slowly. The Bible says for every high priest is chosen from among yeah. not it, no, please it's, the, it's on the screen let's go, every high priest is chosen from among yeah. they are not chosen from among angels, take it today, every high priest, every pastor, the word high priest, contemporary pastor, put it there, every pastor is chosen from among, yeah. they are not chosen from angels, so take it today, to act on behalf of men. In as much as they are men, they have been appointed by God to still act on behalf of you. Are we together? Yes, sir. In things relating to God. They are men, alright, but they have been given a special assignment to act on behalf of other men concerning things that pertain to Jehovah. Are we here? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you need to understand if I get angry, I am a human being. I am supposed to be angry. The other day, Jesus got angry and beat up people in the sanctuary. If I get angry and beat up people here, hey, it will be news on Citizen by Monday. Are you hearing me? Even by evening, by 9 p.m., that prophets, hey. Jesus beat up people. Jesus called people foxes. Fox. Huh? Vipers. Yes. He beat up people in the church. So you need to remember every pastor is first a man, but is appointed to act on behalf of men in things relating to God. In as much as we are men, when it comes to the things of God, God sees us differently. Mm. We speak on your behalf to God. To offer sacrifices and what? To offer gave, to offer both gifts and what? Sacrifices for sins. As part of the job description of a pastor, the pastor is supposed to collect offering. It's part of a pastor's JD. Mm. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm unapologetic about it take it to the bank. It's not the end of the day. Who cares? Are you getting my point? Yeah. Next verse. He is able to deal gently and misguided and since he is also subject to what? Yes. He is subject to human weakness. He is subject to being weak sometimes. He's subject to being emotional sometimes. He's subject to 
every other weakness that anybody else can go through. And you see, the reason why pastors are judged so harshly, that is why most pastors get depressed. Oh, you don't know? Let me give you some statistics. 70% of pastors are depressed. This is proper statistics. They are battle with depression. 80% of pastors feel discouraged. 94% of pastors' families feel the pressure of ministry. 78% of pastors have no close friends. Including me. 97 of pastors have been betrayed and falsely accused or hurt by trusted friends. 97 of pastors. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you see, because sometimes if somebody is even go, is if I receive 100 calls or 20 calls in a day, 19 of them are about people's problems. Pastor, my husband. Pastor, my wife. Pastor, my, my job. Um, I had a demon. A crocodile was chasing me at night. <laughs> see, all those things, you hear them. Pastor, what do I do? The other day, someone said, Pastor, pray for my cats. <laughs> oh, it's true. The person is here. And I had to pray for the cat. No, you see, no, listen, it's, it's true. It's true. Send me a nice picture of the cat. Pastor, my cat is nowhere. Pray for the cat. I said, my daughter, don't worry. I'll pray for your cat. You see, it doesn't matter how silly you think it is. That is the person's passion. So I cannot say I can or disregard what she feels she needs prayer about. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. To you, maybe you go shout now. Nah, what do you mean? I mean, don't you, you think I have nothing doing? No, 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 no. You still have to calm down and pray for the cat. <laughs> Come again. They are emotionally attached to the cat. Pastor, the lights in my house are not working. Pray. Pastor becomes electrician. Sometimes pastor becomes a lawyer. Sometimes pastor becomes a vet. All things. And they forget that that same pastor possibly also needs prayer. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. The Bible said they are able to deal gently with the spiritually ignorant and misguided since they are also subject to what? Human weakness. Next verse. And let me close. Uh-huh. He says, for sins for himself as well as the people. In other words, when I pray, I, I pray for you, I pray for myself. Because of this human weakness, he's required to offer sacrifices for sins and for himself as well as the people. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Yes. Tell your neighbor and say, honor the pastor. Honor the pastor. Yeah, say, you say, honor the man of God. Honor the man of God. Yes. Now let's go to the next verse. There was a man called, I mean, I think two more scriptures and I'm done. It's about five minutes more. There was a man called Noah. Tell your neighbor and say Noah. Noah. Noah in Genesis chapter 6, the Bible said he was the most righteous man in his generation. The Bible says, and Noah walked with God. He was literally in the entire world. Noah was the only righteous man at the time. He walked with God. You see, the phrase, let me actually, the Hebrew word walked with God is not like what we think like walking with God. What it literally means is that when no God takes a step, Noah takes a step. He was literally blameless. He was following the footsteps of God. He walked in the laws and the bylaws of God without missing one. So in Genesis 6, we hear, shall we read one go? This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a eh? just man. Perfect in his generations. Noah was perfect. He was not like some of us. Noah walked with God. Now, in Genesis chapter 6, we hear Noah walking with God. In Genesis chapter 9, we hear the same Noah that walked with God getting drunk. The only righteous man in his generation got drunk to an extent that he did not know where his trousers were. His trou he got so high, like some of you. You get so high, like a kite. <laughs> high. 
Jesus. The other day I went to my in London, in a church in London, I went to my eldest house and then, hey, please pause that one because Drank, and the Bible says, Shall we read one go? Verse 20. Start from verse 20. One go. I know I'm mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Who did it? Now, this is where I have a problem with the scripture as I close. Noah got drunk, but Noah got drunk in his tent. Somebody say in his tent. In his tent. You know what that means? What that simply means is that not everybody saw him drunk. It is only the people that had access to the tent that saw him drunk. Oh my God. Mm. Can I preach it like I want to? Yes, preach. Sir. Noah got drunk, but not everybody. He didn't get drunk outside of his tent. He got drunk in his tent. So it was only the people that had access to the tent. The closest people to Noah. They are the only ones that could see. But ladies and gentlemen, yes. when you get close to an anointing, it is not your prerogative to decide what you see. And it's not to decide everything you see, you go out talking. Say it again. He was in his tent. He messed up in his tent. Mm. But somebody that had the power and the mandate who had been given the privilege to assess his tent got the information and brought it out of the tent. When you get close to an anointed man, that is when you realize that builders of ark like Noah can still be human. Think about it. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told it to his two brothers. There are so many hams in the church. Hams are the journalists in the church. He says, hey, have you seen that? Hey! Now, the actual translation of this scripture from the original Hebrew is not like he saw his nakedness. He played with his nakedness. He mocked the father's weakness. And went and said, hey, come and see. Papa is drunk. At least I don't drink. I thank God for that one. Can I get a, um, 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 a chair? Now sit here. Let's assume you are Noah. Yes. See. You shall not get drunk in Jesus' name. Amen. And then I want two men, two men, two men. Come forward, two men. Yes. Yeah. Can I get the um? One of them. One of you is going to be Ham. So let's say Ham comes to see his father. Just pretend to be drunk. Yes. Now he's drunk and he's high. How can you be drunk and cross your leg, my friend? <laughs> This, this one does not even know how to act. <laughs> so, he's drunk and he's drunk in his tent. Now, get back. No, so, this one see, comes to see his father nakedness and plays with it and then goes and talk about it. Hey, have you heard? Have you seen? Papa is high. So, let me tell you. When it's not everyone that had access to the tent. The one that had access to get closer to him. His right. The reason why he had access to the tent was that when anything should go wrong in the tent, he was supposed to what? Cover it. But the one that has access to the tent is the same one that brought the information out. Anytime God gives you the privilege to get closer to people that are high, you must learn how to cover them instead of gossiping like a journalist. Because ladies and gentlemen, one of the things you need to understand is that Noah will not remain drunk. The Bible says, after Noah got drunk, when you continue reading, the Bible says, and Noah woke up 
So Noah woke up from his wine. Ladies and gentlemen, when a man gets into a moment of weakness, they don't remain there. So when you see that weakness and all you do is to become a spiritual journalist, a journalist in the church, we should find you a job in KTN or Citizen or any of those. Because here we don't entertain spiritual journalists here. All you want to do is to gossip. Hey, hey, have you heard? Hey, they did every story. You are the one to propagate it. It is not a good thing. You attract a curse upon yourself. You have too many problems. The least you want is to bring yourself more problems. Are you hearing me? So Ham saw the father's nakedness and went to go broadcast this. When somebody is coming to tell you a gossip, tell him, I don't want Ham's around me. Tell him, I don't want Ham's around me spiritual gossipers. So when Ham went to tell the story to Shem and Japheth, the Bible says Shem and Japheth took a cloth. Now, Ham has already been seen so ten, ten, like that. So, yes, and hold it on your shoulders. Can you get to uh, come this side so that you can be able to walk back? Yeah, come. So Shem and Japheth took a garment laid it on the put, put please project the scripture on the screen one go one go quickly one go shall we read one go uh-huh uh-huh now they went backwards why because they did not even want to see their father's nakedness yeah 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 thank you they didn't even want to see. They did not even want to prove whether he was naked or not. They don't want to know. And that is the shame, the right people that we need around here. They were told he was naked. But they don't want to prove it. Whether it is true or not. They just want to make sure he is covered. Now, they went backwards. Uh -huh. Went backwards and did what? and covered the nakedness of their father. So they laid the garment to cover him. Uh-huh. And their faces no. Uh-huh. Please put the scripture down. Eh? Their faces were turned away and they did not see their father's nakedness. All that Shem and Japheth wanted to do was to cover. Hey, some of you, you are the number one Hams in the church. Somebody say mercy. mercy. Yeah. They didn't even want to know. Can I tell you something? Take it. Take this from me. There are some things they are better off not said. Did you hear what I said? There are some things they are better off not said. There are some things they are better off not heard. There are some things they are better off not seen. You are better off you didn't hear it because there are some stories. The moment you hear it, it begins to affect you, whether it is true or false. It may be a false story, but immediately you assimilate it into your heart, it begins to affect you. There are some things immediately you see. Some of you, you saw certain things when you were young. You still have the images in your mind. So let's go. Let's be upstanding. Let's be upstanding so that once you stand up, I know I've ended. I still have 15 minutes to close, but at least let's stand up. So Ham, Shem, and Japheth came backwards and covered their father's nakedness. And the next verse, verse 24, shall we read one go? Put the scripture on the screen. Uh -huh. One go. So Noah did what? Tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, I will not stay weak. I will not stay weak. I will wake up. I will wake up. I am waking up. I am waking from up my weakness. From my weakness. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. What did the younger son did? Saw the nakedness, played with it, and went talking about it. And then, so what did he do? Then he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants so shall be to your brethren. You know the descendants of Canaan? Africans. If you, you know, let me, okay, let me, let me break it down. You know, during Noah's time, everybody died. 
Yeah, the only family that remained was Noah's family. Okay, so the people that now grew, multiplied, and became what we see now were the family of Noah. Are you getting me? Yes. So if you trace where Africans come from, they come from the seed of Ham. The reason why we are suffering up to today is because a certain mumu went to see and talk. That is why Africans, we are the number one gossipers and malicious people under the face of the earth. Because there is a seed of harm somewhere inside people. As long as they will gossip and gain mileage, they will talk. Cursed be Canaan. That is harm. A servant of servant ye shall be to his brethren. So, curses came upon harm immediately, instantly. Why? Because he went talking. I pray that may God not make you attract a curse. I receive it. Because you became a spiritual journalist. I receive And what happened to Ham and um, 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 Japheth and, and, and Shem? Verse 26. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of, and may he be king. May Canaan be his. Yes. When you go to abroad, when you go abroad to the Western world, the funny jobs is done by who? Black people. Just because a certain mumu would not keep quiet. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Let me say the last thing. How many of you know Rahab in the Bible? You know Rahab? Have you heard of Rahab before? What, who was Rahab? You, she was what? A prostitute. A prostitute. Rahab was a harlot. Now the Bible says when the spies went to Jericho to take over Jericho. The Bible says that Rahab hid the spies in her house. And the people of Jericho came and said, bring those guys. We want to kill them and sodomize them. And Rahab said, no, they are not here. Rahab protected the spies, God's servants, with her life. When it was time for Jericho to be taken over by Joshua, do you know what God said? Mm. God said, kill everybody in Jericho. Leave that prostitute alone. I mean, to me, that was injustice. There were better people with better behavior, better character traits than Rahab in Jericho. But God still said everybody was to be killed except the prostitute. Why? Because the prostitute protected God's servants. Praise. Now, sometimes some of you when you have the right to protect you actually want to slander and kill when the young boy was preaching in the first service he says honor asked up to your life and this honor subtracts from your life how can God make honorable people in Jericho be killed at the expense of a prostitute mm. why because God honest men that covers and protects his servants you, you are the best gossiper around. It is a dangerous thing for your life. I want you to talk to God this morning, yes. this evening yes. and tell the Lord, Father yes. if there is in any way I have dishonored a voice yes. pardon me, yes. forgive me, yes. help me yes. that from today I will learn how, I will know how to honor I will know how to honor. Come on, talk to God. Come on, begin to pray. 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 Talk to God. Talk to God. Lay mazo brahasi makatosha. Leza zaza brand toni mi gabra shakabai. La jona mago shala la branta. Rapa pala baskana na brand shala la branta. Rapa lias kazona mata. Shala la la bo shata na baya. Rapa la brand shala la branta bara branta ba. Rapa pala brand shala la brand shala la branta. Rapa tebes kala la branta ba. Sene ne me kadosha la bazota. Ikadua azana na matosha. Imantoni mi gabranta ba. 
Father, we pray by your mercies. Revoked. I said that case is revoked. Revoked. I said that case is revoked. Revoked. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Lift up your hands, those of you standing up here. The Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But the scripture does not end there. He says, and every tongue that lifts itself against you, you shall condemn. Today I lift up a prayer over you. And I decree and declare. Yes. Any evil pronouncement made over you by any man of God, yes, any pastor, any yes. bishop, yes. any prophet, yes. any reverend, yes. we decree it is nullified. nullified. The curse is broken Broke. in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. I permanently declare you liberated. liberated. I command that curse to be broken. Broken. To be broken. broken, to be broken, broken. to be broken. broken, to be broken, broken. to be broken. broken, to be broken, broken. to be broken. broken, to be broken. broken. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, whatever was said over you, yes. from today it is overturned. Overturn. We overturn it. Overturn. We overturn. 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 In the name of Jesus. Jesus. In place of the curse, I pronounce a blessing over you. Amen. You are blessed going out. Yes. You are blessed coming in. Yes. You are blessed in the city. Yes. You are blessed out of the city. Yes. You are blessed in this nation. Yes. You are blessed everywhere you go. Yes. In the name of Jesus, your finances are blessed. Yes. Your children are blessed. Yes. Your business is blessed. Yes. In the name of Jesus, yes. I release a blessing yes. over your life. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. The Bible says, by the region of the anointing, the yoke shall be broken. Yes. I command every yoke to be broken. Broken. 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 In the name of Jesus, every pronouncement made over you. Yes. Yes. It is permanently broken. Broken. In Jesus' name. Amen. If I have touched you, please, you can sit down. And those who have not touched with the oil, just let me anoint you with the oil before you sit down. The yoke is broken. Broken. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every evil pro. 
pronouncement made over you. Yes. By any man. Yes. We declare it's broken. Broken. 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 May the yoke be broken. Broken. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every yoke that was placed upon him. Yes. I declare permanently. Yes. It is broken. Broken. It is broken. Broken. It is broken. Broken. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands as we close. I make a pronouncement over you and I declare. Yes. May you begin to assess on common doors. I receive. I prophesy over your life. Yes. From today, assess on common doors. I receive. On common opportunities. I receive. In the name of Jesus. Every office where you need divine help from, yes. I command divine help to locate you. I 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 In the name of I Jesus, any evil arrow that has been projected over you and your house, yes. I command and declare yes. by the mandate of the Holy Ghost yes. that arrow is broken. 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 In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to pray one last prayer. I know tonight the afternoon service is a prophetic service, but time is already gone and we have to do the celebration. So today, just the prophetic will be my prophetic. So you'll be prophesying into my life. Amen. Instead of me prophesying over you, are you hearing me? Now I want to take this prayer. I just let that we make this prayer. You are declaring in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That may Jehovah God cause you to align with his purpose. Amen. Say divine alignment. Divine Divine alignment. alignment. Say prophetic alignment. Prophetic alignment. God said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. You may be doing well, but that may not be what God wants you to really do. Yes. But I want you to make a prayer. This is your last prayer. The Father, help me to align with your purpose for my life. Help me to align with your will. Every prophetic word you have for me, I begin to walk in it. I walk in my purpose. I walk in my assignment. I command the greatness upon my life to come alive. Come on, lift up your voice. 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 
standing by the coast yes. to make incursions against you. Yes. There's a woman standing by the coast speaking against you. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands over her, please. Father, we declare yes. anybody using marine spirits yes. against you, yes. I declare yes. let your agenda backfire. 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 In the name of Jesus. Any evidence being used against you, we declare it is nullified. nullified. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. May the Lord preserve you. Yes. Deliver you and set you free. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Stand. Ma'am, do you know anybody called Salome? Your daughter. Is it somebody's phone that is ringing? Lift up your hands, sir. Where is she? She's in the The Lord said we make a prayer. As I was just about to pray, I just heard pray for Salome. And I realized it's not her, but it's you. We decree preservation. Preservation. Over Salome. Yes. I'm hearing a name. The person is tormenting you. <laughs> just, just put it off for her. trying to pick a name in the spirit. Is it like Georges? Your husband. Is he Ethiopian? Lift your hands up. Georges. I lift a prayer. Yes. And I make a decree. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Any satanic projection. Yes. From Ethiopia. Yes. Today I stand as a voice. Yes. And I decree and declare. Yes. It's nullified. Nullified. It's aborted. Aborted. In the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Every arrow that would have come to your household. Within this year, the enemy was targeting premature death. But we declare. By the mandate of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Your husband is covered. He is preserved. Preserved. Your daughter is covered. Covered. She is preserved. Preserved. In the name of of Jesus. Jesus. Every power of the enemy that want to attack your home, we declare that power is aborted. Aborted. In Jesus' name. We declare that. I want to speak to you after service. Don't be in a rush. After service, please don't go. Come this way. I decree and declare over your life. Yes. Every spirit that frustrates your destiny. Yes. Today that assignment is permanently broken. Broken. It's 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 broken. Broken. Ain't a so tie of your past that is having negative repercussions on your destiny. Yes. Today I decree and declare that so tie is permanently broken. Broken. In the name of Jesus, you are liberated. You are set free. Amen. You are liberated. In the name of you Jesus. You are set free. In the name of Jesus. You are liberated. In the name of you Jesus. You are set free. In the name of Jesus. You are liberated. In the name of Jesus. You are Jesus. set free. In the name of in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord usher you to a new beginning. Yes. To a fresh start. Amen. In the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Receive grace Jesus. to excel. Jesus. Touch is that. Amen. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. I said, put your hands together for Jesus. You are here. And you said you'd never leave. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. You are here. Trust you, Lord. Trust you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. 
have a, a cake? Yes, okay, please. Let's organize it. We want to appreciate. I understand there are some men of God in the house. Let's appreciate my stand, Pastor Majakuzi. Come on, appreciate him. I said appreciate Pastor Majakuzi for me. Uh, Pastor, when is your conference? Which date is it? 21st to 20. Yes, from 21st of this month, uh, City of Light Church is holding a conference and I am encouraging everybody to go. He's my son, and so when he's doing a conference, you are permitted, release 110% to attend the conference. Are you hearing me? Yes. Sir. And the person speaking is my pastor from London. So yes. please, Whoa! you are supposed to be there. Are you hearing me? Hello? Hello. We are supposed to uh, to be, be there. there. Protocol, ushers, choir, everybody. We are going to Kisarian. I think well, I, I think I'll be in town, isn't it? Yes, I would have come back. Yeah. So we are going to support um, Kisarian on that conference, um, City of Light Church. So please make sure you go. Tell your neighbor, go. go. Yes. Go. Get a bus or drive there. It's from 21st to 24th. Prophet Sami Asafwajay, my son, will be speaking there. So please make sure you are there. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I said amen. Amen. When any of my sons is doing a meeting in the city and you don't attend, it's, it's not right. Are you hearing me? Yes. When you see a flyer for any church that is connected to this house, you are expected to attend. Hey. Now, this, this cloth, surely, uh, what happened to the, the one we used in the morning? Now, this one, this one is, doesn't look born again. It doesn't look safe. Okay. Okay, it's, it's okay. But uh, from now, this one, now. Uh, the one we used in the morning was very nice. Yes. Please, it's okay. Hold on. Uh, so we have Pastor Majakuzi in the house. We have um, um, Pastor Don and Minister Jane. Come on, let's appreciate Pastor Don. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Hallelujah. Bless you, Pastor John. Uh, Pastor Don and Minister Jane. Bless you for coming. And uh, we have Pastor Promise and his wife. Come on, appreciate my son, Pastor Promise and his wife. Hallelujah. I like the way they are passionate about ministry. They are just passionate. They just love God. Amen. And we have Bishop Stephen here. Bishop Stephen Ravens. Come on, let's appreciate Bishop Stephen. Pleasure, 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 man of God. It's an honor to have you. I, 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 I under, you understood you were supposed to come to minister, but I think by the time you came, we had, we had almost uh, passed. But trust me, anytime you are in the city, our doors are open for you. Come on, appreciate Bishop Stephen Ravens. Come on, appreciate him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Now we want to um, cut the cake. You want to get, get the microphone? Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we want to say, Kata Keki Sio Ugari. You and your papa are learn from the children. We want the children to surround. Our father, he come, is come, a, come closer. a leader who has raised children. This is the generation. We want to cut uh -huh. and then they go uh -huh. so that now we tell you something. Oh, okay, all yes. right. Wonderful. So, all the children who come and hold hold my hand. Don't hold the knife. Hold my hand. We cut this cake in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hip, 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 hip. Hip, 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 hip. Hip, 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 hip. Hip, 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 hip. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm supposed to feed some of you with cake. 
children, listen to me. Once you receive the cake, you go down back to Sunday school, okay? <laughs> yes. Guys, relax. You, everyone. Relax. Where's the, where's the fork? Now. So once you get, you go. Quickly, go, go, go. Yes, go. Yes. children will get later. God. 
Amen. So it happened when I saw the flyer, I was done with church because of ministry wounds, and I, had, I hadn't served for close to two years. I'd stay in the house, watch movies, sleep on Sunday mornings. Who does that? So I saw the flyer, I spoke to prophetess, and then she said, come, let's go to Odaya. So for me, I was looking for a free gig because I was bored on a Saturday morning. On Facebook, I posted, as I write to Destiny, because I was dissing the Kikuyus, so I said I was going to shrub that day. What I didn't know is it was my ride to Destiny. And because of going for that mission in Odaya, I was able to be remolded. I was able to receive my healing, and then I was brought back into my place of assignment and purpose. Everything we say about Grace Arena Ministry, that tagline, transforming lives, maximizing potentials, it's not just a tagline, it's a reality. So for whoever is seated here this day and you're thinking this church, oh, transforming life, maximizing potentials, if there's any day you get frustrated and scared and done with God, just look at Teacher June, and if God was able to restore me, he will be able to restore you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Come on, appreciate Teacher June. Amen. And as he, she says, there is another happy birthday. Uh -huh. Today is your surprises. I uh -huh. know you don't like surprises, but uh -huh. forgive me for that. Mm -hmm. There is a women that they are washing. Mm -hmm. You in Thika. Mm -hmm. They are very old. Yeah. Uh, six years ago, uh -huh. you went there. Yeah. And you gave them the widows and the widowers. Yeah. You have told us to respect the elders. Yeah. That is the women... In, um, oh, those widows uh, yes, program we did, uh, yes. Tika. Yeah, and then they are watching and they said, because they have the small phone, mm -hmm. they cannot give you the video. Mm -hmm. They are praying for you. Amen. And they said, anybody mm -hmm. who want to bring you down, mm -hmm. because of their prayer, mm -hmm. they are the one who will go down. Amen. They never go down. And Amen. they say, they are really praying for you. You connected them to the government. Yeah. For they always been taken care of. And all the government that they were there, mm -hmm. you have been uh, uh, talking to us and leading us about the leadership. Yeah. You have said today, yeah. the readers, you taught them. Yeah. All of them that they are seated here, yeah. they were uplifted. Wow. They are no longer here. The one who welcomed you to the county. Yeah. Now he's the one in the subcounty in Nairobi. Wow. They said happy birthday to you. Amen. The rest they are being said to the uh, other county, counties and others they have gone outside the country wow. for the peace of this nation. Amen. And they said you are not sent here by yourself. You are sent by God. And for that, may the Lord God bless you. Amen. May the Lord keep you. Amen. We are waiting for you again. You go back there. Yes. May the Lord God bless you. Amen. For those that they did not uh, come in the morning, we want to call uh, Kareb. Uh -huh. Yes, Kareb. Yes. Okay. Kareb, this is the children that you have raised. For those that uh, they were not there. Mm -hmm. That is uh, six years ago. Papa went to this place, preached, and then he, uh, this boy got born again. And then also raised her and said that he will be able to raise her to the school. We want Kareb just to speak, and then you release her, you release him with a word of blessing. Amen. And God bless him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. So that is Caleb six years ago when he was in the juvenile school when in Othaya when we visited the school uh, six years ago in Othaya yes uh -huh. so yeah, yeah good speaking Swahili I thank God for the Lord I am the Lord of my life 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 Elifikia pali ju unajua ukiwa nje serikali hizi kuacha kwa krimino nikashikwa nikafungwa hiyo siku maanisha sikuwa na wazazi nilikuwa na mama alikuwa anatusaidia lakini baba baba ndo alikuwa ananisaidia so hiyo ndo ilikuwa chanzo ya kufanya ningi kwa crime huko nimepatana na watu wote 
ukota pata na watu wa rape cases, murder na vitu zingine zote. Lakini after papa alikuja huko akaniombea niliweza ku transform. Nakumbuka hiyo hiyo time ni, ilikuwa 2019 around up 2019 kasiko si ndo alikuja afu kitu ya maajabu nilikuwa class 5 nikafanya mtihani nikapita nikarukisho hiyo class hiyo mwaka tu nikafanya mtihani mwingine ya class 6 bado nikarukishwa nikarukishwa class nikaenda class 7 so nikasoma na pia after aliniombea nilikuwa napata maksi ya chini niliinuka na exam nilifanya na mimi ndo nilikuja namba 1 hiyo shule Namshukuru na pia ningependa kumwishia happy birthday na azidi kuendelea hapo si ndio Kama mpude hands together for Caleb We just want to pray that God will make his dreams come to pass I mean around 2018 we don't know he didn't even know where his life was going to turn to but God supernaturally shifted his life and now he's no longer in that jubina um um center he's now in school he's about to do his form 4 exams and we trust god that he will pass exceedingly and that he will continue to go further and further until he finish university and and uh, at the time that um we we picked him there are so many other people we support our ministry support i mean we support almost over about 30 people in terms of school but there are some of them that are exceptional and doing exceptionally well and i believe he is one of them and we want to promise you we're going to make sure you i i'm going to make sure i take you of you until you finish university and if possible you you if you pass your university where well, you get first class you even do your masters abroad amen it's possible yeah i mean yeah I I always say you should as a person be able to make people. Tell anybody say make people. make people. Jesus said to his disciple follow me and I will make you. If you people cannot count who you have made, at least I can count from last year 10 people have taken abroad. From last year. Just last year that I came up I can count 10 people have taken abroad paid for them to stay abroad, paid their ticket to go abroad. Um make sure they are aware where they are staying abroad i mean 10 people facilitate from beginning to the end amen tell your neighbor make someone. make someone yeah the women in thika i connected them then at the time to the um second lady who is now the first lady at, um, now and now they are being supported we did an event there the um, um they also came to connect with our, 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 our work and then now we supported them these are widows or we fed over 200 we supported over 200 widows and so when all these widows are praying for me you think i can fail no no i cannot fail i am too, i will be too blessed to fail so we supported them the the government saw what we were doing then they came and then we did a project together and then they are now in the hands of uh, currently the first lady taking charge of what is going on there and god is doing great things amen hallelujah amen. and god will continue to do great things with your life If, I mean if you go to Kenyatta Hospital the equipment there that we bought I bought then that is equipment in the cancer department of Kenyatta Hospital <laughs> wealth millions not because of the fact that we have money in excess but because of the fact that we want to transform lives amen. that is what we seek to do amen there is no point but I can buy any car I want to buy if I want to even may, by the grace of God in the future we can get a jet But you see there's no point me living a lavish life when I can support many others. Yes. That is what I believe in and that is what I stand for. Amen. Step of your hands towards um this gentleman and speak a blessing over Caleb. That God will bless him. That God will favor him. That his future will be great. Come on begin to pray for him. 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 
Begin to pray for him. Begin to pray for him. Begin to pray for him. Libra hazone me gado shata. Brando shkadimi azona matoshka brantete. Liga do shabandi bi azoni abadoshke. Le brantani mi kato shabrantata. Lega do shabandi bi azoni ya azoni mi kapaya. We speak a blessing over you, Caleb. We declare that your star will shine. The purposes of God concerning your life will come to pass. You can only go up. You can never come down. Yes. Grace will sustain you. Yes. The favor of God will carry you. Yes. The hand of God will keep you. Yes. You shall be a great man in your time and generation. Yes. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed with thanksgiving. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I said, say a better Amen. Amen. Yes, so quickly, in case you have a gift and you have not brought it, you can release it quickly so that we can finish. Yes. Um, in case you have a gift, um, you have a birthday gift. Yeah. And then you have not brought it, or you have a special seed you want to give. Um, yeah, you just give us a song as we take that. Um, Bishop, can you give us a, can you give us one song, please? Yes, come on, let's appreciate Bishop Stephen to come and give us us. Please, the offering bow around as Bishop gives us a song, and then please get Bishop a mic for me. Quickly, 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 get me a mic. Yes. If you have an offering, just come and honor with a special bless you. Praise the Lord. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Bishop, Pastor, Prophet, man of God. So good to be here. I'm so excited to be in the rich church in Kenya. Amen. Yeah. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never failed me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will see Of the goodness of God Can we just love on him one more time? I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up, I feel I live.
Pastor, I'm just passing through. But I see the goodness of Jesus running after you. It's running after you. And not just you, but everybody else that is connected to you. So I want the church to help me to sing this and pastor's breath. Your goodness is running after. One, two, go. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. I know you come on, Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Stay with right me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Together for Bishop. Come on, appreciate Bishop. Is there anyone fellowship with us for the very first time? Today's your first time of coming here. Any first time in the church? Any first timer? Come on, appreciate our first timers. Come on, put your hands together. Appreciate our first timers. Oh, let's appreciate our first timers. Yes. In case today is your first time, today was a special day. We usually close early. Uh, we are. It's a special day, so forgive us. Um, but uh, next time, next week, I know you will come. We will close very early, and you shall be blessed. Are you blessed? You came to the house of the Lord. I said, Are you blessed? You came to the house of the Lord. Yes. If you are tight, I come forward. Let me. Let's receive your tight. If you have given your tight and you have not been prayed for, please be as just be upstanding because we are closing. There's nothing else we are doing. If you have you have released your tight and you have not been prayed for, come forward and be prayed for. Or you have your tight with you, just walk up here and let's pray for you. Pray for you. Tight is one tenth of your income. When you eat your tight, you become tight. Amen. Just come forward and let's speak a word over you. Father, we thank you for these lives. 
We honor you as they have honored you with their tithes. May you honor them in your way that says you open the windows of heavens and pour them a blessing that they will not have room to contain. Yes. I pray and I decree and declare over every life yes. that is standing here as they have released their tithes. We rebuke yes. the devourer for their sake. Yes. Abundantly bless them, prosper them, and cause them to walk in the overflow. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Are you blessed you came to church? Yes. Yeah. Now let's say, let's make a yearly declaration. So the party after service, there is tea and sausage and uh, mandazi and what samosas and so many things down there. Just enjoy. Do anybody enjoy? Enjoy. Yeah, please. If you come from Luya land, don't raise your expectations. Make sure you manage what you eat. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yeah, so please enjoy yourself down there. Now, please um, take me up. The name of Jesus, I am fruitful in everything I do in Jesus' name. I, I am fruitful and, and I multiply, multiply every good thing that comes into my hands in Jesus', Jesus name. name. I bear fruits of righteousness in Jesus' name. I declare I am fruitful in the city and fruitful out of the city in Jesus' name. I am like a city set on a hill. I cannot be hidden. I am fruitful and relevant everywhere I go in Jesus name. I flourish and excel in my purpose and my assignment in Jesus name. I declare I am useful to my church. Community and business in Jesus name. I am fruitful in marriage and every relationship God brings my way in Jesus name. I am fruitful in the work of my hands. I prosper financially. And I have the anointing of ownership in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you blessed you came to church? Let's share the grace with one accord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Let's share the confession of faith, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy, blessings and favor, anointing and prosperity shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Are you blessed you came to the house of God? Yes. Remember, church goes three services in a few months. Tell remember three services. Yes. And all the young ones, I am personally, I personally want you to come for the first early morning service. Amen. Amen. If you are under 30 or under 40 here, please, the first service is for you. Under 30s, those under 30s, we are tailor making that service for you. First service, seven to, it's not starting now, but we are conscientizing your mind in the next few months. First service from seven to nine, um, and um, nine, and then second service from 9.30 to 12, and the third service from two. So, we, GAM is going three services. So, GAM is going three services. Say, GAM goes three services. GAM goes three services. Yes, so I am going to mobilize all the young ones who are not married and single, who are waiting on the Lord, come here 
early in the morning because you don't have a husband you have to make tea for you don't have a wife you have to iron their clothes for anything so those services for the young ones amen and then the adults will join us in the second service are you blessed you came to church yes sir may the lord bless you and keep you i want to say a big thank you to everyone for coming to celebrate my birthday with me the fact that you've been put on white it's a sign that you are connected with me. May the Lord bless you and favor you. Amen. May we sing our prophetic song as we go home. The Lord bless me. <laughs>